the first thing that I'll say about this project is that there is a link in the description to the GitHub project with all of this code. So you can go check that out and walk through it. This is really just a showcase of that project. I'm not going to create anything from scratch in this video. It's just going to kind of give a light explanation as to the different elements and things that you really need to pay attention to. But this is a cool little system about moving documents and, you know, that there can be multiple on the screen or within the scene and they can overlap and you can grab the one that's underneath. And I think it works really well. It's pretty simple, but you'll definitely be able to expand on it. So let's ignore the multiple papers aspect right now and just focus on one single paper and talk through what it takes to be able to move one kinematic body 2D around. So that's what the node is for the paper. Kinematic body 2D with a sprite just for the paper background, a collision shape that matches up with the paper, and then these two labels aren't really important, but they're just the text that you see on the screen. So the first thing that I want to point out that's really important is that you set pickable under pickable to on. And then also make sure that your paper is on a layer that is not equal to the mask. Because if, you, if they're set on the same layer, then multiple papers will start colliding with each other. So that's very important. And then in here you can see the code that is used for all the dragging. Now I pulled this from various resources online and kind of modified it a little bit. But the basics around this are that whenever we click, we have to make sure that we're uh, pressing the mouse button, that we are within the confines of the collision shape of the kinematic body and we're doing that with signals down here at the bottom mouse entered uh, once the mouse enters we say mouse in equals true once it exits mouse in equals false so as long as we're inside the paper and we're clicking then we're setting these variables that we're going to need the dragging distance direction we're setting dragging equal to true once dragging is equal to true whenever there is event mouse motion then we're setting the new position based on where the mouse is at that point and then every frame under the physics process, if dragon is still true, then we move and slide and we head towards that new position at this vector for the for the speed. So, And you can adjust that to drag slower or faster. So that's what the code looks like for the dragon. It doesn't matter where on the paper I grab, I can still drag the paper around and it stays with that offset. Now when we have multiple pages in the scene, it's important to remember that we did set the layer and the mask to different values so that they won't collide with each other. But the other thing that's difficult to think through is how do we make sure that we're grabbing the right paper and not just all the papers that are underneath. And that's where this paper getter area 2D node comes in. So this is just an area 2D. I call it the paper getter. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. It has a very small collision shape, like very small. This probably isn't the best way to do this part specifically, but it's just, it's just very small because we want to make sure that it's only ever colliding pretty precisely with where our mouse is. So the first thing we do in the paper getter code is set its position to the global mouse position. What this node is going to be responsible for is not only finding the right paper that we're grabbing, but also reordering the papers whenever we grab one that's in a stack. So in the game code, I have this empty list paper stack. I have this paper scene preloaded before the scene, and then this is just so that we can spawn more papers. So I had child paper. So this would spawn more. And they just kind of spawn up here in the corner. But with that stack, every time a paper is added, we append it to this paper stack list, and then we step through the stack, and we're setting the Z index of every paper to whatever the count is or index within that list. So the idea is that the list builds with papers and each of them, they're kind of stacked in order of their appearance in the list. And then whenever we want to push a paper to the top of the list or to the top visually for the player, we just remove it from the stack and then add it back and it gets added to the top. And what that looks like is if these papers are here, then this paper that's on top is kind of at the top of the list. But when I click on this one, we're going to push that paper to the top. And then you can just go back and forth, and they're always getting removed and re-added to the list to go back to the top. And all of that logic is happening within that paper getter code where we check, okay, count equals the length of the get overlapping body. So this is when we're looking at an area of papers where there are multiple overlapping. So if my mouse was here, there are two papers underneath me. There's two overlapping bodies, and I just want to grab the top one and not the bottom one. So if the count is zero, we don't do anything. If the count is one, that's very easy. We don't have to worry about choosing anything. We just grab that paper, and we also make sure we push it to the top of the list. 
That way, if we're moving it into a position where it is overlapping with other things, it'll have the highest Z index now because it's the active paper. If the count is anything other than one, then we need to find out what the highest is. And we just do some simple logic about that. Max index equals negative one, top paper equals null. Then we step through all the overlapping bodies, all the papers that are underneath the paper getter. We're checking for the, we're just trying to find the max Z index. Whatever we find, we choose that one. And then we step through all of the overlapping bodies, make sure we set their chosen value to false. And then if we click it, we do all this logic kind of before we click, but if we do click, then we definitely push that paper to top. So it's kind of a it's kind of a process of making sure that we're getting all these variables aligned. Here's that chosen variable that you see and the chosen function from that paper getter. We're making sure that the top paper is chosen and the other ones are not chosen. And when all that comes together, it allows us to move multiple papers around and let them overlap. I realize that it might be a little easier to understand if I kind of made all this from scratch in the video, but I, I don't think that's really necessary just because you have the GitHub that I would encourage you to go to, pull down the code, and you can just play around with the project yourself. All of the logic really just takes place in that Kinematic 2D script for the paper and then in this paper getter, and hopefully that's pretty helpful to get you started. So if you learned something new in this video or just enjoyed watching it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.